Oh, the happiest hour. The happiest hour. Welcome to the end of a week. Cheers to you. You made it. You're here with me. All 3, 4, 5, 10, 12, 13, 15, 100 of you tuning in live across Periscope, across Facebook, across YouTube. Uh, I'm glad you're watching. I'm glad you're here with me. It's been a difficult, it's been one of the hardest weeks of my life, if I'm being completely honest. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but I, it's been a challenging week. I'm glad you're here at 5.30 Central, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific, and 11.30 GMT at the happiest hour. Hopefully you're drinking a GNT. Uh, I've got this here, Shaxberry Cider Arlo, a wild fermented cider from the hills of Vermont. Fresh apples, no sugar, made in Vermont. Arlo Shaxberry Cider. Yes, even you can drink like John Adams, second president of the United States. John Adams brought... Every breakfast to a close with a big flagon of Shaxbury cider. Yes, sir, even you can afford it. All is with me, as always, is my, uh, my, my wonderful counterpart, the man with the soothing voice, Lancey Joe. Uh, Lancey, uh, I've had a number of people tell me that your voice has soothed them during this uh, quarantine. I'm not ah. kidding. More than one person has said that to me. That's so nice. And I thought, well, now you know why I get on the phone with him every day, because it's the only <laughs> thing that prevents me from falling apart. Truly. Um, well, you help me, too. Um, <laughs> and uh, I wish <laughs> I'm such a good uh, salesman there. <laughs> you help me, too. You You're help me. Real strong <laughs> reminder of what not to be, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's great, man. It's great. Uh, are you finally... I, I know you're not unpacked, but are you done moving? Yeah, the move is over, thankfully. Uh, it's been uh, very challenging. It's been very frustrating. It's been the... This is the worst move I've ever gone through. And I've moved out of the country twice. <laughs> <laughs> I've moved across the country twice. I've moved out of the country twice. And this was the, this was the worst one. Are I mean, you talking about over the pond? <laughs> on the other side of the pond, mate. The other side of the pond, mate. Uh, yeah, dude, it's been a pretty, uh, it's pretty, pr pretty freaking ridiculous. There's just a heck of a lot of, um, of, of just activity, man. And you said it yourself when we were talking. It was like the, because I've got so many things and it wasn't that far of a move. It was like a back and forth constantly for like a really long amount of time. Right. It just was the whole thing is just a travesty. And um, it, I went to yeah, I went to high school with travesty. Uh, <laughs> great guy. <laughs> travesty. He was the captain of the golf team. I remember. Uh, I, I liked Mary. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, travesty was a cool, a good guy. Um, I did not like Mary Kilfuck. Uh, she was a. Uh, <laughs> I hated Mary Kilfuck. She was not very pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Kilfuck and they uh, they dated, I think, senior year. He was the uh, he he. The sad thing is, he had to graduate late because he had that terrible concussion from the full contact golf uh, tournament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> in which uh, Phil Phil McGroin hit him in the head with a uh, <laughs> uh, six six wood. <laughs> Phil McGroin. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, the bullshitting's already started. It's, it's, uh, it's, been, it's in full swing here on the happiest hour. Just like Phil McGroin's six iron to, uh, to, uh, <laughs> what's his name's head? What was the original character's name? <laughs> I don't even remember, man. I've had too much Shaxbury. Arlo by Shaxbury. Um, <laughs> You feel, That's what is what kind of beer is that? Well, this is a hard cider, buddy. Wild oh, fermented yeah. from the apples of the hills of, of Vermont. You know, uh, one time when I used to, I I know ne I've never drank a lot, but yeah. when I used to drink some, uh, one time we were at Chicago Bagel Authority and you brought over some uh, some ciders. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't think it was that kind of cider, but. Um, you brought some over and, and you were like, you want one? And, and I took one and I swear it tasted just like champagne. Dude, it's, it's actually not a lot of people say that 
It's a lot of people say it'll taste like champagne because of the the yeast, the way it's fermented. It's very similar. Like yeah. it's gonna be a similar flavor palette. I like it, man. I like a funky wild cider. And you know, who's a big fan of cider. Friend of the show and special guest today, uh, Corey Wood. Nice be on the show. Nice uh, transition there. <laughs> Well, that's why they pay me the big bucks, Lancey. <laughs> that's why. I, that's why I'm. That's why I'm wearing the blue sport coat. <laughs> By the way, nice, co- nice jacket. Everybody's Thank always you. tuning in. I'm, the number of people who tell me who are maybe, maybe even relatives of mine who tell me they're like, Lancey's so funny and he's so charming and talented on the show, and I'm like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> uh, well, maybe. Yeah, maybe I need to go up there to uh to where you're from or over there where you're from yeah, just coming to my family reunion speaking of which susan healy spears uh of a, a distant and long unknown relative of mine uh just like this my family is like a is like a i don't know how to describe them they're like uh you know goblins or hill people they lurk in the shadows <laughs> and they can come out when you least expect it and <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's lovely. Uh, Susan Healy Spears. We got to go out to visit her and, uh, and we should take this show on the road one time. Um, oh, that would be great. And we, let's do some stand up sets. Uh, you, you and me can do some stand up sets and whoever our guest is, yeah. do a set. And then, uh, and then afterwards we'll have a, a six hour Q and a, that sounds perfect. <laughs> it'll be, it'll just be us on stage. We'll get one question and talk about it for six hours. Yes. <laughs> All right, we got time for one question. It better be a sports question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, um, man. <laughs> check, out, check out this tie. Look at this. You got Paisley. Oh, yeah. Paisley's a big deal. Brought to you by Christian I feel like I, one of these – one of the – Really? That's you're a high roller. This jacket's not. I'm telling you, this jacket looks nice, man. This is. Uh, you wear this to a to. No wonder you got a job working at a Burger Bar, man, because that is a sharp jacket. I found this jacket uh, at H and M, and it H and M stuff is pretty reasonable priced, right? But yeah. it was also on clearance too. So, wow, um, that's exactly. I'm telling you, that's the way to do it. Uh, I dated a woman for a while who was way into H and M, or as they say in <laughs> Europe, Ash und M. <laughs> they have a real name. It's like Heinrich and Moritz or something. It's like what it stands. Oh, for. really? I thought yeah. you were gonna make an S and M joke. <laughs> no. Uh, when I when I grew up, we were so poor we couldn't we didn't shop at H and M. We we could only shop at H or M. We couldn't <laughs> shop at both. Both of them. <laughs> I only got one of the two. I got fifty percent of this situation. <laughs> how many? How much? You, what do you got? A handful of quarters? Even you can afford H or M. <laughs> you got Heinrich or Moritz. <laughs> That's really the name of it. Yeah, he- it's like Heinrich. or like Hennessy and Moritz or something. It's like a very weird <laughs> Hennessy and Moritz. Yeah, it's like super weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know why they that's just the, that's apparently that's what it is. I'm going to order that next time I go to a bar. Yeah, I'll take I'd a like Hennessy and Maroots. Maroots, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, this is a juice uh, bar. <laughs> I'd be like even better. In that case, give me a shot of ginkgo biloba. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to grind up that ginkgo biloba in your juicer. Put it in a syringe because I'm going straight to the races today. <laughs> oh my god well i tell you man if, if you've ever tasted ginkgo biloba like outside of the gel cap mm-mm, it tastes like death <laughs> oh boy really yeah you get how much ginkgo are you taking man Is, I, did you read about know. this on like a a chat room or like a forum or something that no i saw uh... in one of trump's talks that it'll fight coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> One day, one day we're going to remember him as one of the greatest performance artists of all time. He's like right up there with Marcel Duchamp, except <laughs> what a, how, why would we have, why would we have elected a political terrorist into the White House? Like the guy, it makes, it's mind boggling. I think he ran as a joke and then he actually got elected and he was like, oh shit. I thought, I really did think that was what. And then he like, like believed in himself. 
This he's is, like, I got to get up early now. This is some BS. Wait a minute. Yeah. yeah this is so ridiculous. This just goes to show you shouldn't believe in yourself. If you believe yeah. in yourself this much, you might end up at the White House and you could fuck everything up. Oof, that'd be bad. It would be yeah, a- I started to run for mayor of my hometown once, and I was like, no. What if? What if? <laughs> They're going to make me do paperwork. <laughs> you know, th- Well, I read, when I was in high school, I read that um, M- Michael... Uh, uh, who's the guy who did bowling for Columbine? I thought you were going to say, who's the guy on the Bulls, uh, number 23, Michael? Jordan? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, Michael Moore. I saw yeah, him. Yeah, Michael Moore. He ran for uh, for head of um, the PTA or like head of the school board and got elected. And he ran under the uh, on the on the platform of fire the vice principal. Of his high school in Flint, Michigan. And he got elected. And then the vice principal quit. <laughs> He'd rather quit than be fired by Michael Moore. <laughs> um, I was at a... I went to see Fahrenheit 11-9. Yeah. You know how... Yeah, there was he, a Fahrenheit 9-11. And then he made yeah. a sequel about like Trump, I guess. Which is Fahrenheit 11-9 or something. Am yeah. I right about that? Yeah. And I will... I, you know, I'm I'm pretty as far as uh, politics are concerned. I'm fairly left leaning. Yeah. Uh, um, but Michael Moore's movies are very. Well, it's just because of your short leg. <laughs> Don't bring that up, Brendan. Sorry, sorry man. <laughs> uh, so I went to, but uh, but he is a good filmmaker. Though. Yeah, he's a great filmmaker. He really is. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like watching the movies, uh, even though I don't ag- agree with everything in them. Yeah. Sometimes they get pretty extreme. Yeah, they get pretty, uh, they, they get, he's very heavy handed. Uh, he, I saw Fahrenheit 9-11 when it came out. I saw Michael Moore talk also at uh, Eastern Michigan University in like 2004, which was like kind of the height of Michael Moore's fame. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was like that was the Bush that was the end of the first Bush administration, the beginning mm-hmm. of the second I mean the term of Bush. It was like it was a very weird time. And like, you know, I remember looking around at people and being like, This is the worst president we could ever have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, you silly asshole. What a ta da 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 <laughs> and then that day in 2004 you started moving your apartment and That's you true. just now finished <laughs> it was 16 years in the making <laughs> uh so i went to see fahrenheit 11 9 and um in in new york it uh at a uh the new york fi- documentary film festival yeah um that happens in november i think every year mm-hmm. you and, went to um, that one do I? You went to the documentary film festival in New York, your hometown. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They. They. Uh, there's only the one theater. Yeah. Uh, and uh, people don't understand that. There's really only one theater in New York. <laughs> that's and that's and that's the St. Mark's Theater in the East Village. That that's what it is, um, or the I. What is the IFC over there in the uh, in Greenwich? In Greenwich, Green Witch. yeah, <laughs> just next to the lighthouse. I accidentally said it right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't let people know that I know the real word. You know who lives in the East Village is Big J Okerson. And does uh, he? Yeah, my neighbor is like buddies with him, and didn't even know that Big J was a famous comedian. And he was like, he's like, oh yeah, I I hang out with. This guy, I hang out with, he called him like Jason or something. He was like, yeah, I hang out with Jason on the front stoop all the time. This is how self-important comedians New are. Yorker, New Yorkers are. <laughs> There's a famous comedian. That guy knew that. And he's like, oh, I didn't even realize it. Oh, he's a famous comedian. What? That's so, Who that's was so, it? Johnny that's, Carson? Every New what? Yorker, dream, let me tell you something. Every New Yorker dreams of being that casually conceited to like not know that they're like yeah. oh oh I'm sorry was this is this the most expensive champagne oh I didn't <laughs> I just drink it all the time 
<laughs> not that great. Like, <laughs> they just, all of them want to be that casually, like, if they can just rub you that way, they right. just, if they want to drizzle it on ice cream, they love that mo- moment yes. so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you care about something? That means nothing to me. Oh, yeah. What you care about. Um, where I, are you from again? Detroit, <laughs> Michigan. Detroit. I thought Detroit was in Indiana. Hmm, funny. <laughs> anyway. Well, when I went to Harvard, blah, 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 right. blah. Like, that's exact. Like, pe- I, like, that's, I've heard that sentence. Like, somebody being like, wait a minute. I thought Portugal was in Spain. Hmm. Anyway, when I went to Yale, I studied. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I don't think that they would claim Yale or Harvard because they're not in New York. They they only they only uh, it, things only exist within NYU, New York. But, you yeah, know, NYU fucking, would work. Maybe yeah. Y- yeah, Columbia. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it would be more respectable to spend time in in Brooklyn than it would to be go to That's Harvard. Really funny, yeah. <laughs> oh, I went to Brooklyn University. Not one of those upstate schools like Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the way up there in Massachusetts. Who wants to go up there? Goodness. <laughs> Might as well go to Montauk for college. Um, I, I do think it's a funny phenomenon. I mean, like, I'm, I'm sure it's like this where you come from, and it is where I come from. Cars mean, I know it is. You're from Michigan. Yeah, so from cars, cars are important. Cars mean something oh, yeah, to they people. Do. Yeah, they do. It, they are the key status symbol for our culture where we grew up because we grew up in the 99.99 percent of of uh the world that's not new york well let me say Uh, this not only are cars important to people people reckon time in terms of cars so like that's that's (laughs) how important they are it's not like so if you go if you go to a family reunion for the for the Roland family, my mother's side of the family, they're all Ford people. They all drive Fords, they drive Chryslers, that's who they work for. That's they, why we get along. My dad's a Ford man. Yeah. <laughs> my father was an Oldsmobile man. Anyway, they, I come from a long line of Oldsmobile men. <laughs> so other men are Methodists, some are Catholics. So Some anyway, are some are Mopar and we don't deal with it. <laughs> what do you drive? A Peugeot? Get out of my house. So, so anyway, my, uh, my my family, if you go there and you ask a question like, hey, when did grandma retire and go up to Houghton Lake? They'll be like, oh, that's a good question. Dad was driving the Dodson. And so that was yeah. pro- like, that's how they, they start sentences with like, wait, what year did Emily graduate college? Yes. Oh, let me see. For a little bit of time, you were driving the Challenger, and I think that was when. Like, yeah. it's, literally, that's how they'll figure it out. I was driving the, I was driving the Dodge Caravan. Yes. Let me see. We bought that Caravan, so it had to be after we had the second <laughs> child. Like, yeah. <laughs> no other, no other place on the planet I've ever gone has done that. Like, it's a very uniquely like that area, and it's not just my family. Like, everybody will do it. Like anywhere you go, uh, what happened? What 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 year were you living in that place down uh, is in South Lake? Oh oh South Lake. Let me see. I bought. Oh, I was doing really well because I I remember I was driving the Crossfire. Like, <laughs> that's how weird Detroit is. Detroit Detroit is a place that thinks the Chrysler Crossfire is a really sexy car. Like, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't doesn't that have like lines on the hood? that it looks like a rack to put stuff oh it's on the, the hood. weirdest yeah it's it's a it's a bizarre ass car man it's got i do i will tell you this it's the only car that i've ever seen and i know this is how i know i'm dyed in the wool detroit is because i saw that car and thought that is a sexy ass on a car it's the first time i've ever thought that i was like i would fuck that car like <laughs> i would actually it's i've never had a, and, and it's a fucking chrysler like come on <laughs> That's how that's how you wound up with tetanus. <laughs> Let me Te- fix the lighting. Let me here. tell you. This what are you talking ridiculous. about? It's fine. Tetanus was uh, a great um, uh, transfer student, actually, in my high school. <laughs> and we're full circle. Yeah, we're back, baby. <laughs> uh, tetanus. I love that game on Game Boy. Tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> Tetanus. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, how about man. how about tetanus ass in your <laughs> white <laughs> tetanus tetanus fit in your ass? <laughs> Oh my gosh, man! This is so we're we're losing our minds. I gotta call it. We need to get what we need to do is go get a Corey Wood into this conversation. Uh, that'll that'll clear things up. <laughs> he really, he really. Corey Wood is a spiritual brother. He's a uh, he's a good friend, and he's uh he's he's also. I feel like he should have been strangely could have should have been from Detroit in many ways. Like, dude, I need I I want you to talk to my dad so you'll see. Yeah. All right. Hey, hey <laughs> Corey Wood. Great lighting. Let's bring him in right. here. There he is while he's figuring it out. Okay. Yeah, now I don't look like a silhouette. Yeah, really? I thought you were reporting. You were writing out a murder on, uh, <laughs> on yeah. uh, 2020 with Connie Chung. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got to keep my identity secret. I don't want the mob to get after me. <laughs> what, you, what are you drinking? Red's Apple Ale? Is that what that is? Red's, and I'm drinking Bullet Rye. I, I Whoa. Love, I, dude, Corey Wood double fists. Like, we've already lost to the zombies. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't want to drink whiskey, but last time I was on the show, I drank whiskey and I had such a good time. It was a blast. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. so fucked up last time, messed up last time. I don't want to Brian row this. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to Brian row this. I gotta get Brian. We gotta get Brian on here, and we'll have to do the four of us again. But I need to get Brian on here individually also because when what when it's the two of you guys together, when it's like the four of us, it becomes the energy becomes too bizarre to like. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I have a hard time getting in. Like, I I don't think I'm the funniest person off stage. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> me too. <laughs> I mean, for myself. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No. 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 I was <laughs> I was like, that's fine. Brendan is funny off stage. <laughs> it's like the only place I've seen Brendan be funny. It, it's so. funny because the number of times that I've had uh, I've been told, and sometimes from like comedians I really like and respect, will tell me like, man. You are so funny off stage and like when nobody's like watching or there's not a camera or you don't have a microphone, like you are really funny. And I'm like, God, God damn it. <laughs> That's like telling a stripper, like you're really sexy when you're not trying to make any fucking money, you dumb bitch. Like, yeah, yeah. You're super hot with your clothes on. That's <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you're being a mom, when you got your kid in your kitchen and you're making them Cheerios, so hot. <laughs> That does sound like something I'd tell a stripper, though. I'd be like, "You'd just be so hot if you went to college." Like, <laughs> hey, man, she's been working on that medical degree for twelve years. I mean, yeah, that makes good money. Part of me, that pre-med degree. Uh, you still living in the garage, dude? No, so I I had to come to. I'm in Midland, Texas, right now. Uh, my parents came down, and I had to come down and help my dad. Get a whole bunch of cheese. I, I transported about <laughs> 200 pounds of cheese today. Why are you serious? <laughs> well, so supply chains are getting all messed up, and my dad runs a restaurant, so he had to call his friend who runs a restaurant in Lubbock. And so we went down to Lubbock and picked up, like, a ton of – my dad has one of those creepy vans, like, you know, those giant white, white ones. White panel vans. Yeah. And so we had to go, and we loaded a ton of cheese. It took forever. It was a pain in the ass. I'm I've been surprised working. the state lets you near one of those vans. <laughs> Does your no, phone I'm... go off with an Amber Alert prematurely when you get into that van? <laughs> yeah, a future Amber Alert. <laughs> they're like, we don't know which one they're going to take yet, but they're taking they're one of them. They're taking somebody. <laughs> this sounds like a Grand Theft Auto mission, though. <laughs> <laughs> There's a... There's a van with an arrow over the top of it that you have to get into. Yeah, it's, it sounds like one of those like things that they throw in a video game to try to be funny. It's like, get the van with all the cheese. <laughs> Corey, gotta go get the van with the cheese and then sh shoot a couple of random pedestrians. And... <laughs> Grand Theft Auto, Texas. Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was driving, so I, I didn't drive my car down here the other day, and I was... So my dad, uh, I drove down with my parents, and I've been using my dad's truck, and I was driving it around. My dad was just like, oh, yeah, uh, lock the truck up when you leave at places. And I was like, yeah, I do that anyway. Well, he's, And he was like, well, there's guns. <laughs> there's just, like, so many guns. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad runs a restaurant? I didn't know that. Yeah, he, he runs uh, four restaurants. He runs wow. Salatsky's. So wow. he makes sandwiches. 
Slotskis and stuff. Well, that's Slotskis, right. yeah. Slotskis. Yeah. The, that's do y'all know what Slotskis is? Uh, well, I do. I, I don't know what it is. What is it? It's mostly in Texas, but it's in the south like there's but most of it's in texas and it's like just a sandwich shop it has cinnabon in it it's a good it's little a place cinnabon in it? yeah it paid yeah, for my call damn. damn bro that's pretty nice my- yeah the I, i've had probably the best meal ever at a slotsky's once in jackson mississippi oh my <laughs> god but i was i was at that point where i was so starving that like okay. anything would have been good but this was like next level this was like culinary expertise. It was just perfect time and place. And yeah. I got the right thing on the menu too. You know, like when you, like sometimes you're in an adventurous mood, but you get hungry enough where you're like, you know what? I'm not taking any risk. I know what I want yeah. right now. Bologna <laughs> sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> I bet Schlotzky's would make a good bologna sandwich. Yeah, they got sourdough. You yeah. Yeah. Wait, they got a sour. This is a sandwich joint that has like real ass sourdough. Yeah, yeah, sour that's like what they're known for. Is like they bake all the bread, like what? so they've got like sourdough and dark rye and that's stuff delicious. like that. God damn it! Now I want a sandwich. <laughs> I'm from Midland, Texas, baby. I'll get you one for free. Huh. For I'll the get cheap you <laughs> of a plane ticket. <laughs> for the cheap, cheap. Hey, I was looking at plane tickets yesterday, man. If you want to fly, you can fly to France right now for four hundred bucks. People are Round not, yeah, or just straight. It's like they're doing like one flight a week, but it's only four hundred dollars. It's so cheap right now, you know. Yeah, I, I just bought a round trip to Chicago for like one forty, one fifty, because I have a friend who's supposedly going to get married in June. So dang, who who? Uh, you don't know her. She was a teacher. Uh, oh, all my, right. So, but you she got said friends? I, Why are you doing I, comedy? Here's the thing: is I I love Marissa, but like. I made her top 50 list. Like, they're like, so if we have to be down to 50 people, you're going to be one of those 50 people. And I was just like, that's crazy because, like, you wouldn't make my top 100 list. Like, and I love her. It's just like, you must not know anybody. I, um, this is a shitty thing to say in a public forum, but I, I've had something like that happen to me also. Where, like, maybe, maybe this is like a thing where you're maybe like, I, I don't know, Lance, maybe you can corroborate this or Corey, you can go into further detail, but I, I, maybe as a comedian, you have this kind of energy where you feel, you know, I feel alienated from most people most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> like I just, the number of times I feel lonely and people are like, you have so many friends. Like why, why would you feel lonely? And then <laughs> not only that, but I have friends who will come up and see me who like I'll like I'll go back to my hometown and I'll run into somebody and they'll be like oh my god dude I follow your shit I listen to your podcast like I I you're I I was singing about it the other day and I was like Brendan you're one of my best friends since high school man you're so fucking cool I'm glad to see that you're doing shit and I'm like I don't remember your name <laughs> well the the problem is doing comedy when you're doing comedy a lot you're forced to hang out with people like. I was hanging out with people I disliked more than my friends most of the time because, like, we were just at the same mic. And so I'd be like, Because we were on the same live stream. (laughs) Yeah. I'd be like, Well, there's fucking JoJo. And I talked to him an hour ago at that last mic and he told me (laughs) about Iguana. And I was going to hear some more about that shit. And it's like, you see people. And I really didn't hate very many comics, but, like, you see people where you're like, I really don't want to talk to them. And you end up talking to them more than like your mom. It's yeah. like yeah. I, I talk to you more than people I love, and it just and then so, but it drains my energy. Yeah, so I did have like friends I really enjoyed hanging out with, but I'd be like, I taught for eight hours today and talked to twelve year olds who just like made fun of me, and then I went and talked to adults who made fun of me, and so <laughs> no, I don't want to go get a drink with you. Like, no, I want to go <laughs> home and eat pizza by myself. <laughs> this is explaining so much yeah <laughs> it's kind of weird because it, you can't you can end up getting it well because you're when you're doing comedy you're like in a foxhole like it feels like you're you're on the you're in a trench with all these other people who are also like they're not nobody's figured it out if you figured it out you wouldn't be at this open mic like <laughs> right yeah yeah, I do talk to people more than I talk to my mom, for sure, because she goes to so few open mics. That's my mom's <laughs> problem. Yeah, that's my meemaw's getting mad at me because I'm not hanging out with her, and I'm just like, just go to some open mics. Yeah. Just, yeah, just yeah, sign yeah. up. 
hey, Mima, you know where I am, okay? So come at me if you want a relationship. Get your open mic uh, map app on your phone. and Mima, then <laughs> Dr. Get a- Dr. Phil says that you're, it's up to you to put the in, 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 investment into the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just need my Mima to have... What would happen though is my Mima would get a Type Five and it would like tear down the house every time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't ever want to encourage people to do mics because they will be better than who than you. Oh yeah, they'll show who, up and crush. <laughs> That's my biggest up, fear. I, they'll show up and think they crush. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I yeah. had some people like I've like hung out with and they've started doing comedy and they do it like three times. They're like, "Holy shit, man." I've gotten four laughs, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking god, dude. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll show you how it's done, and then go up and eat shit for four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I feel like my friends with comedy, I have the friends who, like, I could be on a show at Laugh Factory with, like, 500 people in attendance, and my friends would be like, yeah, how that? how's that little hobby going? Oh my and god! Yeah, yeah. There are friends that I could go up at an open mic with four comics in the audience and a bartender who doesn't want to listen to us, and they're just like, "Dude, when are you going to be famous?" Like, not. <laughs> oh my yes. god, that's so funny. I, it's so frustrating to me, Corey. It's funny because it's so frustrating a lot of times for people to come and see and to, who you know to come and see you because they want to support. It's very sweet. They want to support you and they want to be like, "Hell yeah, man, go! We like we love you. Do it!" And you're like. You don't understand. Like, I need you to shit da- su- sh- sit down and shut up and only laugh when I fin it, when I go, a bit a bit a ba, and now you laugh. <laughs> like, I don't I need have- you to go, woo, when I'm like, hey, so my name's Brendan, woo! <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you filmed this clip for me, but I did a show at the Laugh Factory that should have been the best clip I've ever done because yeah. it was like 300 people. I did really well. But my friends went, and so it's the only time I've ever done comedy where I had to do that thing you see on Netflix specials where I was like, seriously, okay, stop clapping now. I've got to tell my joke. Because yeah. like, it was yeah. like, Corey Wood! And then, ah! and like, The clock is ticking. I got a video. <laughs> well, and it ruined it just because like now if I send that to someone trying to get booked, they know I'm not that famous. Yep. So they hear that 20, 30-second applause, and they're like, this dude must have like added applause in here, which means he probably added laughs. And I'm like, no, my friends are just ridiculous. My friends are just really supportive and loving, and I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> They're so supportive and loving, and they ruin everything. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, now I feel like an ass. Because they came back and watched again, and I told them, I was like, guys, just clap for like the normal amount of time. Like, you don't need to cheer. <laughs> You don't need to say Corey. You don't need to be like Corey. Just, just when they say Corey Wood, you just go, and then like the the rest of the crowd will do the rest. Like y'all don't need to carry them. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ate shit that one when I did that and told right. them that that I ate scared shit. off. Yeah, <laughs> and they were like, "Well, you told us not to laugh unless other people were laughing." And uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man. <laughs> What? All right, hey, by the way, are so our, our, uh, our, our, our schools done? Or is everything done now? Or what's going on with that? Uh, I don't know about the rest of the nation. Texas is done for the year, but I'm doing online. Uh huh. So still, it, it's very weird. I I honestly work about four hours a week, and then I have. Uh, and hey, Laura, then, by the way. Hi, Laura. I don't think They're I'm saying met- hey to you. Okay. <laughs> she said hi. Have I met Laura? Laura, have you met Corey Wood? Oh, by the this way, Gloria says hello, Corey. I'll tell Gloria I said hi. Oh, yeah. I, I said you should just come on and... I didn't see that we could see. I told her, I was like, you should just come on in here and say hi to Corey. And she was like, I don't look good enough today. And I was like, believe me, for Corey, you're fine. Like... <laughs> <laughs> this shit, I... My my little brother grew a mustache and my family made fun of him. So as a joke, I like went and I cut off my beard, and it was the worst mistake I've ever made because like instantly I was just like, oh my god, I have so much neck under there. Like, 
<laughs> I didn't realize how much neck I had. <laughs> yeah, this this shit is just running interference from the rest of my neck. <laughs> You look real good with you. You look like you're gonna like write a novel or like become a philosophy teacher or something. Fucking Dave Landau this week. Uh, Dave Landau on Wednesday said, "I do look like a, a philosophy professor because of this jacket." But Dave Landau this week said, "I look like a Civil War general." <laughs> <laughs> well, Davy lands. You should do Civil War. I've always thought it would be a very funny idea to do a Civil War reenactment, but be on the South, and you're real competitive, and you try to win anyway. <laughs> just, we're not losing. Yeah. Wait a minute. The, 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 the South didn't win the Battle of Shiloh. Like, <laughs> nice actually, Shiloh they, actually they don't. they might have. I don't remember. <laughs> I, didn't know, I don't know any of the battle names. Gettysburg is... The, the only one I know, and that's because of the address. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, of course. That movie is great, by the way. That's because of uh, the address. I was thinking of a location. Like, yeah, what, that's what is like, the address? It's a 1701 Gettysburg, you know. <laughs> that's easy the to post remember. office? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, uh, you're saying Gloria didn't want to get on camera. I had to, my sister's getting married, and I had to look at uh, photography pictures of her to, yesterday because I went and saw her. Yep. And she's like a buck ten. Used to be a dancer and like looks like a dancer, and she was just like, "I'm so fat." And I was just sitting there like 240 pounds at five foot six, and just like, "You shut your mouth." <laughs> shut what are you, you don't weigh 240. <laughs> uh, I weigh. I do weigh two twenty five. What? That's um, I, I don't believe that. I swear to God, I just have really thick thighs. Uh, I got most of most <laughs> mo- most of Corey Wood is calves. <laughs> but yeah, I gotta I gotta get on that. I gotta get rid of this and uh, get a six pack. I bought a kayak. Oh, but yeah, Corey, dude, you're a good, right. you're a good looking guy, so. You, you can't you can't fake this this symmetry you got in the face. That's true. Well, thank, yeah, it's, but that's like the that's face. Ab- is doing Avogadro's it. number right on your face. In this face, avocado. Clemens' body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> His, this weird this weird hair that he's got going on. <laughs> My face, his beard, his body. Basically, everything except his face, and we'd be killing. It. You're oh, hot. Then we'd steal your height. And those <laughs> <blue loops>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, together, we'd be one hot guy. We'd be a hot. We'd be the hottest guy. Well, I'm, I've uh, I've been a vegan now for five months, and uh, my body looks like Callista Flockhart right now. <laughs> <laughs> I look like. Mr. Burns. You say that because because your body is married to Harrison Ford. <laughs> yes, and and he's constantly in trouble with the FAA. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? Is he flying Harrison, around the country fucking with air traffic control? At, Harrison Ford is a pilot, and he's been in. He's like every few months he gets in trouble for something. Yeah, that's so. <laughs> yeah, one time he. He landed on a taxiway, uh, which you're not supposed to do. <laughs> so I guess he just got confused on which one's the runway and which one's the taxiway. Yeah. Um, and then he's in trouble for something right now. Like he ran a, the air traffic control told him to stop and he didn't. So he put a lot of people in danger. <laughs> well, he, just, he just flies where he wants. Maybe he thinks he's in the Millennium Falcon. I, that, that's what I was thinking. I was trying to tie that into Just a joke. Buzzing around. <laughs> buzzing around. Uh, <laughs> flying it. Why can't we get into hyperspace, Chewy? <laughs> he, he says to Callista <laughs> as he's flying the plane. Are they still married? I, I, who knows? I haven't heard from her in a long time. Do you think he... She always looks so tiny that even when I was in like high school and that, and she was on TV, I remember thinking, she looks like a woman who would just break if you hugged her. She would, let alone Harrison Ford's 80-year-old body having sex with her. It's a terrifying thought, really. Uh, Is Harrison Ford 80? Oh, he's probably 90-something now. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> you know, Chuck Norris is like 90. No, yeah, yeah. 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 Chuck Norris is real old. It's crazy. 77. It, it, Harrison Ford is 77 years old. Jamie, geez, look, Jamie just looked it up for me. Jamie, uh, put that on the – Jamie, throw that up. Yeah. Do you That's have a, a, a assistant now? Oh, uh, wait. Hold on. It looks like he's still married to Callista Flockhart. Yeah, we're on to wondering how old uh, uh, Chuck Norris is. William up. He's old AF. Let's see. I've got it. I've got Chuck Norris. He was directly. Did you know he was a student of Bruce Lee directly? I did not know that. He's 80, so he's actually 80, so not oh. quite. He's That's still only. old. He's he's 80, and he has a six-pack. Like, it's hot. That, that's impressive. If your six pack has wrinkles, that's like how you know <laughs> you are like doing well in life. Like he's living well. Well, Callista Flockhart definitely has it. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you go vegan? Like, was that like, do you feel bad for the animals, or you're trying to be like healthy? Uh, I have an acronym: uh, cheap. C H E A P. Cheap. Uh-huh. Uh, the challenge of it, the health benefits, the earth, uh, <laughs> animal rights, and psychic abilities that go along with it. <laughs> you can put it on with psychic abilities. <laughs> well, I, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> God damn it, Lancey. The psychic abilities. <laughs> it's because you're not a, you're not absorbing all the negative energy of those animals that just died <laughs> if you think about it animals are really stupid so when you eat them you get a little bit dumber yeah and, and vegetables are very intelligent they're yeah vegetables saw... don't have any thoughts at all they they can't pollute your mind with their thoughts because they're just vegetables Ah, oh, I like this. I we could See, actually. I would go. Let me tell you something. I would say what I just said. I would put that up against anything Jenna Marble said on YouTube at any given time. I think it's as exactly as entertaining and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. So, like, but you have to. I think you kind of have to believe it, or like, really be. There are so many people who make their living by being idiots, and it's like. Any of us could do that. I don't know, but I don't know if you have to believe it or just really have to sell out. Like, uh, who's the who's the gay Republican <laughs> Republican dude? Mike Pence. Other <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> Milo Yapanopoulos. Yeah, Milo Yapanopoulos. Yapanopoulos. My doll Yapanopoulos. <laughs> I'm pretty sure his name is My Doll. Giannis. Giannis? He plays for the Milwaukee Bucks, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Giannis Yapanapa. What's the name of the team? Uh, My Doll Yabba Dabba Doo. I know exactly who you're talking about. My, uh, My Doll Yabba Dabba Doo ya sounds like a really, like, edgy version of the Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> Milo Yabba Dabba Doo ya. Yeah, where's the edgy Flintstones reboot? Where, like, <clears throat> there's, like, a fucking union dispute, and Fred has to, like, kill a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, and they, it's they... all, like, bad light, like, poor, like, dark lighting, like the Dark Knight or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> and then they bury I... Jimmy Hoffrock. At the 50-yard line. <laughs> I feel like you could throw the character of Roseanne into an edgy Flintstones real quick, and she'd get along. Oh, it'd be great. Yeah. She, it, was it John Goodman that in that, that remake they did in the 90s or the live-action Yeah, that was John. I think it was him. Maybe that's John, why I'm Roseanne. <laughs> was, okay, he was her husband in the show only, right? Not... Not in real Just life. Just in the show, yeah. Uh, who, Tom who was, Arnold was her. Tom Arnold. That's what I was trying to think of. Yeah, I knew. I knew you. You were. Cu- you were getting close. She's you, you Roseanne Barr is funny, man. She is funny. She's just insane. She's just crazy. She's uh. She's saying all kinds of racist shit left and right. <laughs> and what? That was it, not her. It was the ambient. <laughs> 
I, Ambien is very racist. It's the most racist drug. I tried to write a whole <laughs> bit about her and how how like how dare you go like think she's a piece of shit. You know how much she's had to do in her life to overcome all this stuff. And no one wanted to listen to that bit. Not a single person. <laughs> people, it's a bad t- people <laughs> held their their righteous indignation so so close. And you know what? I don't blame them. It was it was the wrong position to take. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my favorite way to do jokes. I love doing wrong takes. I love being like I'm wrong. But here's why I think yeah, I'm wrong. And, yeah. and it's funny because it, while I'm doing it, I'm like, this is so funny that I'm even saying this shit. <laughs> right. But everybody else just thinks I'm being honest. Well, see, my favorite joke to do, and I can't do it because, like, no one ever gets on my side. But I love to do a joke where I go, like, I'm a teacher, and then I spend, like, ten minutes. It will be, like, a whole show set of me, like, trying to convince people to agree with me that not all kids deserve to go to school. <laughs> That's funny, be, though. And I'll be like, most of them do, but, like, you know, like, occasionally, like, just one, like, one or two, we can be like, that kid doesn't get it. Like, most he doesn't of them get do, but some of them definitely don't. Yeah. It's just like, it, not everyone needs math. Well, like, the problem is also, Corey, here's this thing that's shitty. People already know that. In their bones, they <laughs> really actually already believe it. And they just don't want to admit it. And so the problem is that you have to overcome their own internal hatred of themselves for be- for hating themselves for believing and actually knowing something that deep down is an uncomfortable truth. That's the, well, that's the that's the fight you're waging. Well, there's a lot of countries or maybe there's one. I don't know, but there's China definitely will go in when you're like 12 or 13 and they'll be like this is your skill set and this is what you're going to start getting ready to do. Yeah. So some kids go in and they'll be like here's your skill set and it's basically nothing, so now you're going to go work. Like, now you're going to go, like, do something, like, mop floors or something. And then they'll be like, this kid's really good. Like, I think Yao Ming, they, like, just walked in there like, that guy's tall. He's tall. And he's he playing, playing basketball. basketball yeah. Ever. Yeah. Like, if they want you to be a comedian, they put you in front of tons of different groups of people. And they're like, you got to make this guy laugh now. Make this guy laugh now. <laughs> I'm serious. Are That's they- what they do. Like, if you're going to be a Chinese comedian, like... Joe Wong wasn't allowed to do stand-up in China. He had to come to the United States, learn how to do it, then go back to China and become famous. <laughs> he just wasn't funny enough as a 12-year-old. No, no. <laughs> but you know what? That shows you their system is wrong because Joe Wong was right, and he was funnier. <laughs> Goes to show you that in this instance, two Wongs do make a right. <laughs> That was okay. God. <laughs> we need op- we need open mics again so people can get booed. I literally thought you were about to say we need opium. <laughs> You're right. Is that joke? <laughs> we need opium and ambium. Ambium. <laughs> opium and ambium. That's my favorite radio talk show. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my oh, man. Bless you. Thank you. Um, Corey's Corey's allergic to uh, hack premises. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do y'all feel, do y'all feel like weird if you ever go out in public now and you like need to cough and it's not you're feeling sick it's just like maybe you swallow a water wrong but like yeah. anytime like walk into the store and like I just get a tickle in my throat I'm like God. Yeah. It's like, I feel like a terrorist. Yeah, it's, same thing. It's like coughing or sneezing. I feel, And then you right. read these news reports of people who are like, they coughed in the Rite Aid and now they're in jail. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think like that's like somebody's, I'm just going to be like, <clears throat> and people are going to be like, officer, and now I'm going to be in prison telling my well, hack I- jokes there. And then I'm really going to get coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> and that will be the worst part of prison. <laughs> Well, for me. <laughs> no, they're letting everybody loose. Harvey Weinstein's free right now. What? Is he really? I don't know. That, that Who's sounds he gonna threaten. Legit. Look at him with that walker. I mean, look, he should be in prison, but I'm just saying he's not like a public threat anymore. Nobody's going to be like, let me go hang out with Harvey Weinstein. Oh, Lancey dropped. Couldn't handle the Weinstein material, Lancey. Lancey, Lancey. is a big supporter of we- uh, Weinstein, so he just he didn't want to hear us talking trash about him. Yeah, I, 
that to be very public. Lancey was has always been a huge supporter of Harvey Weinstein. So he's not here to defend himself. That's so bad. <laughs> Let me call him up. Let me get him on the phone again. He's okay. he's trying to Skype me right now, but there he is. I think I'm he's trying coming. to. Hey, there he is. I, I mentioned. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Why aren't you on a uh, video, buddy? Oh, there you go. There you are. I mentioned Harvey Weinstein one time. They cut that cord real quick. <laughs> we better not. I thought it'd yeah. be okay. We did the Roseanne Barr jokes, and now this. <laughs> we better well, did not. You, didn't you see him with his walker, and then the next day they took a picture of him, like, walking fine? Oh, it's yeah. just like, yeah. that's the best move. Like, I think that's such a ballsy move to just be like, yeah, just get this old man a w- walker, and yeah, they'll never pick him. <laughs> He had like a neck brace on, like he had been hurt in a car wreck or something. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "This isn't that trial. This is not that trial." Yeah, and he's just like, "Sorry, guys, I just injured myself just raping. That's <laughs> what." <laughs> oh, I've just raped too hard today. <laughs> <laughs> Weinstein, uh, why must I do this to myself? <laughs> I he every the thing that happened with both him and who's the billionaire that uh that that killed himself? Epstein. Um, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, Jeffrey Epstein. So there's the thing with both of them is that they have these like testimonies where like they'll start reading it and then in the testimonies it'll be like did they like th- it'll show like a clip where like the person investigating will ask them in the deposition like so your penis is like malformed. And, like, for both of them, that was, like, a thing. Like, somebody said to Jeffrey Epstein, like, so your penis is egg-shaped. Literally what he said. Egg-shaped. What? Egg-shaped. Yeah, egg-shaped. <laughs> and the same thing as, like, someone said to Weinstein, like, yeah, your so your penis is malformed. And, yeah, what the, right? What the fuck? What What, how, what did that have to do with the trial? I, I, that, I don't know. <laughs> like, like, you, like, your penis is malformed, and Weinstein was like, yeah, and he's like, all right, no further questions. Yeah, that was the whole thing. Yeah. That was the whole thing they said. There, and he's like, so this is about how your penis looks. Not only have you raped too many people, sir, but you are you have an ugly penis. I don't, I don't get it either. Like, I, I feel like, like, look, maybe that's true or not, but it does feel like, why are we... Just put him in jail. Like, he can't get... <laughs> You don't need to insult the man's ugly penis. He's already a monster. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I on a limb here? Like, I just don't. I, it had to have something to do with the t- like. The only th- the only way I can make this make sense in my head is he's like, I didn't have sex with that woman, and then they're like, then how does she know your penis looks like an egg? <laughs> <laughs> the only way that makes sense coming up in court to me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point though. That's a good way to do it. <laughs> that's so funny. Then how does she know that you have a tattoo of in excess on your left thigh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Depeche Mode. Uh, apologies. <laughs> what a weird fucking it's so weird. I love that, by the way, my cousin Sarah Elner from the UK just dropped by right now in the conversation. <laughs> She's like, I just dropped in at the weirdest moment. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird. <laughs> uh, but if we're being honest, this podcast is never normal. I mean, this podcast, this show. How often do y'all do this show? Do y'all uh, do it once Mostly t- Tuesday through uh, Friday. Um, so y'all four or five times a week? Yeah, four times a week. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, for about an hour every time. I have to. It's my daily checkup with Lancey. He's uh, he's pretty much at this point. He's one of the few people keeping me sane. He's a wonderful man. The number of people who watch the show, by the way, it, it, first of all, it's more than you would think. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's hey, a lot of people. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> all of them universally love Lancey and and will not <laughs> stop telling me about how much they love Lancey. Yeah. Well, do you always dress this nice, Lancey? And no, this is uh, this, this was for me for the quarantine. But I think I'm gonna start. You look great. I I've got like y'all both look nice, and I have like uh, a buffalo chicken stain on my. Shirt. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm in swim. I'm in swim trunks because it's hot. Well, I thought here. in Texas, wearing your nice buffalo chicken shirt, I thought it would be like a it is like a nice thing to do. <laughs> like, yeah, but you see, so buffalo chicken shirt. That's what you do. That's like how you tell. That's kind of like. So we have this thing in Texas. If you're single and you're ready to like, you know, go out on a date or something, you rub some buffalo sauce on your shirt. <laughs> but so this was my nice buffalo shirt. I wanted to look nice for the podcast, but then I got ranch on it. After dipping my buffalo uh, sauce in ranch, so I just ruined it because buffalo and ranch together means that I'm in a complicated relationship. So most people stay away. <laughs> I'm in a complicated relationship with feeding myself. <laughs> with yeah, with depression. Just. just <laughs> I love well, it. I, I one of these times, not this time, because we're we're running out of time, out of time. But one of these times when you're on the show. We need to have you tell the story about Kane's chicken. You told me we were on the road, and you told me a story about how much you loved Kane's chicken, and it was one of the funniest goddamn things I've ever heard. That I was like, nobody, Sad. Could have, nobody, no, it was beautiful because I was like, Corey truly loved Kane's chicken. Like, <laughs> Kane's chicken saved his life. <laughs> it might have. Yeah, <laughs> I've never felt that way. One time I was freezing cold walking home from school and I bought a five dollar hot and ready from Little Caesars. It's the closest thing I've ever been to the relationship you've had with Kane's chicken. <laughs> I, I'm very close to Kane's. It's I, I love it more than I've loved any woman. So <laughs> had sex with it more than I've had sex with any woman. So, so. <laughs> wait a minute. That isn't buffalo sauce at all. <laughs> oh god that's just you know cane sauce mixed with semen <laughs> cane sauce i'm a caniac baby <laughs> <laughs> this uh i i felt much more comfortable when i thought no one watched this show and then you're like surprisingly people watch it and i'm like well okay no, I can yeah, just I go in on, the, on, on, on coming on with cane sauce uh, all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, so now I just want to pray or something. I don't know. Like, what's good, wholesome content? I don't want to get fired. <laughs> what? Why would anybody fire you? You're, uh, a, you're I, a wonderful person. Those chi- you're doing a service to those children. Ah, Texas is super weird. So like, it can just like, I told my dad because we have uh, we have meetings with the kids where it's like this, and they can see it. And I usually turn my camera off, but occasionally I'll take a hit of my vape, and and then I'll be like, "Holy shit, did I turn the camera off?" Because I know instantly what's yeah. gonna happen is the kids gonna see that, and they're gonna like just be like, "Oh, this is the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me," and then they're gonna be like, "Mr. Wood was smoking meth." While I was trying to learn English and <laughs> <laughs> trying to teach you how to say words without teeth, what what if I smoked what what do you think would happen if I smoked math every day and they figured that out? But like I was the only teacher in the world where like a hundred percent of my kids passed every you test. Probably 100%. become principal, man. <laughs> no, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. You would be fired no matter how good you are at your job. They don't care. <laughs> you seem like you're taking a very strong stance for meth right well, now. I got fired for smoking too much meth. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the best heart surgeon in all the land. <laughs> yeah. I was I was the greatest heart surgeon you had ever seen, that anyone had ever seen until that damn cane sauce. <laughs> 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 oh my god uh cory wood we're running out of time buddy uh where can where can where can people follow you get after you uh cory evans comedy i go by cory evans when i do comedy cory evans comedy at uh is my twitter handle and my instagram handle so y'all can follow me there uh it's not very funny i've been taking fo- um i've been trying to get back into photography so now it's just really poor photography well i mean nobody hardly anybody's doing comedy i'm doing uh this weekend 8 30 i'm doing uh i'm doing a show uh live streaming the global pandemic can't stop it basically it's steal the show comedy uh streaming to an audience in moscow um, through my buddy oleg denisov we need to get him on this show actually so uh, that's the only comedy i've been doing in weeks so we'll see how this goes, but Corey Wood, uh, don't feel crappy for not getting up on stage or anything. Ain't nobody doing that right now. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm I'm trying to figure out. 
I think this is hurting a lot of people's forever. I've been like, well, I just can't not do comedy for two months or I'd die. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, wait, I can. And it's <laughs> turns out that's not, what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And it's like it's kind of like I'm going swimming and living life. So, well, buddy, uh, I'm jealous. It's nice down in Texas, it sounds like. Uh, and you've got 200 pounds of cheese. So life could could be worse. Uh, <laughs> Uh, peace, brother. Take it easy. We'll have you again on here soon. And uh, well, next time we'll have you, we'll have Brian Rowe on here. We could also just talk as friends without an audience That's one true. day. You know? Right. What am I doing? <laughs> why, why would I do this to myself? <laughs> All right. I love you guys. All right. Peace. Bye. Love you. Oh, my God. What a good dude. Uh, we, should probably, so great. we should probably wrap here, uh, Lancey. Um, I, uh, this has been a blast, man. I'm glad that we've gotten the – this is week two, right? So only two weeks of this so far. Yeah, but they've been – They've been so good, though. It seems like yeah. I, well, you know. this late week has lasted a, a sixteen years for me. So. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. So this uh this has felt like a lot a lot more, but I'm glad. Yeah, man. Uh, it's good. What do you got going on at the uh, Lance Joe and Venmo show today? Uh, maybe uh, I think possibly my guest is uh patrick bolduck but i'm not positive what a funny guy man we need to get him Very on this funny. actually talk to uh, talk ask him about that tonight man because that would be fun to get him on here next week and then sometime next week we have to have laura hug on she's she's good for that yeah we're filling up actually you has got a lot of guests coming on uh next week we've got john corcoran on tuesday who's a, a good a good buddy and a a very fun guy. His father's a stand-up comedian. He actually was a former speechwriter for Bill Clinton when he was in the White House. And really interesting dude, John Corcoran. Then we got Jay Hernandez. He's a lawyer up in Minnesota, author, funny guy, really popular on TikTok. Nice. Yeah. And then we've got uh, maybe my friend Ashley Weimer. She's a singer in Michigan. She's the, the chick who sings the chorus during like rap songs. <laughs> so she's a really popular lady. We'll see if that happens. And then we've got to have a, a show with probably uh, with Laura or Dylan Scott, I think, potentially also. Still got to sc- schedule all that stuff. But it's amazing because when you start doing this, you start, rem- you know, I, I was complaining earlier about, like, I'm like, I don't feel like I have any friends. And then when I start thinking about it, I'm like, I got way more people I want to talk to than I have the ability to talk to on this show. Right. So anyway, man, uh, thank you again, Lance, for joining, of course. Uh, yeah. I, I say it every day because I feel like uh, my presence is a burden and being friends with me is challenging. So thank you again for showing no, up. No, man. <laughs> being friends with you is great. And it's easy and it's fun. So uh... <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I see I see my parents paid you this week. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I see they switched banks. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> the cool. Bank of Italy is now their <laughs> official bank. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, well, Lance, thank you so much, man. And, uh, enjoy the Lance Joe and Venmo show. We should check it out. Otherwise yeah. be well, dude. And I will see you on this show on Tuesday. Probably talk to you sooner. For sure. I'll talk to you soon. Hope you have a good weekend, everybody. Take care. Want to know what you're up to. Love you for watching. We'll see you on Tuesday with John Corker and don't miss that episode. Take care. Bye. Bye.
Thank you.